Okay. So I guess not uh, to not hold up a whole lot of your time and let's get rocking and rolling. Um, we can start with, with Lucas. Are we rolling? All right, so I'm gonna mute myself um, so that there's no feedback on my end. Um, but Lucas, whenever you're ready, um, just introduce yourself and take it away. All right, cool. Um, so my name is Lucas. Um, my topic is the power of name and the weights of identity. Um, so I first wanted to touch on uh, the power of names. Um, so, you know, in general names um, in many cultures, uh, you usually have very powerful links to them. Um, you know, I'm an Ethiopian American, so I can definitely speak on my culture um, and Ethiopian culture. So in our culture, names can represent or, um, you know, be of significant people of our history or also can be of um, biblical characters. Um, we're very religious, so that's, that's something that's very common in Ethiopian names. Um, or they can also be um, powerful messages and words of life, but um, obviously in a, in a, in a native language um, that is Amharic. Um, so, you know, whether, you know, it's just a, a word in our language or someone um, in our history or a biblical character, um, they all create um, real authentic and unique identity for an individual. Um, so, you know, of course, their name is going to be attached to their identity um, and it can create a, a strong sense of power um, and also just power in their identity as they move through life. Um, I think it's really beautiful, to be honest. Um, you know, just for a quick example, um, my father, um, his name is Hewitt. Um, and in our language, that means life. Um, so, you know, when my grandparents and his parents um, gave him that name, um, you know, of course you could say that like, it makes sense because um, when he was born, it's, a, it's the start of a new life, but um, it's also has a deeper meaning in a sense that, um, you know, they wanted to give him that name because they believed that um, he would really bring purpose and, and life into the people he interacts with um, as he grows up and um, becomes a man. They really believe that um, by giving him that name that he will really um, touch people as he um, moves through the world. Um, so that's just one example. Um, and then for my mother, um, she has a pretty long name, but her first name is uh, Yekatenish. Um, and so with that, um, that means kind of like purity and love, um, kind of a rough translation. It wouldn't exactly translate that in, in English, but that's kind of what it means in the Amharic language. So, you know, of course, um, when her parents gave her that name, um, they really thought her to be a, a pure and loving soul. And um, they thought she would um, continue that the rest of her life as well. Um, so then speaking on the way of identity, um, you know, obviously when it comes to race, race has a significant weight um, regarding identity, especially in the United States. Um, being someone of color um, creates a, a plethora of negative effects, um, creating a heavy weight on their ident identity. Um, you know, black people because of that live in fear. Um, whether that be, you know, personal acts of racism that they might face um, in life. Um, you know, mothers and fathers fear, you know, they might struggle to escape their troubled neighborhoods and potentially might lose their children to gangs or prison, or they might fall to drugs or even death. Um, because of the systemic cycle, um, you know, involving redlining, poverty and, and racism, um, it has always been hard for, you know, members of those communities to escape and kind of emerge um, from their communities. Um, you know, in addition, you know, mothers and fathers, um, you know, always live in fear that um, they might not get well-paying jobs due to discrimination um, in the workforce. Um, and we see that on a regular basis. Um, so, you know, all those issues, you know, are because of their identity as, you know, a person of color in America, um, and, you know, even in this day and age, you know, all black people, 
young and old, um, doesn't matter, um, man or woman, um, they're going to be um, fearful of the police. I mean, obviously we've seen that recently, but again, that just is because of um, their race, which is attached to their identity. So um, those are just some things. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on um, regarding uh, identity is that another issue um, is how minorities um, can feel like outsiders amongst people, you know, not like them. Um, this is a huge problem that we see with PWIs um, and, you know, especially LVC. Um, I feel like a lot of um, LVC's minority students struggle with kind of like that sense of belonging community um, because of the overwhelming lack of diversity. Um, and, you know, this isn't um, just between, you know, black and white people, you know, it's all minorities, it doesn't matter what race or ethnicity um, or identity. So, you know, for example, um, people born of, you know, different variations of interracial couples um, or being born with maybe like non-stereotypical um, physical features um, or being brought up in a non-traditional upbring upbringing, um, you know, people can suffer from this sense of um, or sense of lack of belonging because of um, their ident identity. So um, it can cause a significant weight and burden as they kind of move through life. Um, you know, I think I can definitely relate to this. Um, like I mentioned, I'm Ethiopian American. So of course I was born of Ethiopian parents. Um, you know, they're both very light skinned and that's obviously reflected in me. Um, in addition, Ethiopians are very synonymous for um, being a very specific type of African people. Um, that's for like many reasons, um, you know, partly because of our physical features. Um, we definitely um, have unique features that sometimes people struggle to um, identify and kind of like um, know what's the Ethiopians. So, you know, I've heard a bunch of things from people calling me Hispanic or, you know, mixed between black and white, um, Indian, Middle Eastern. So I've heard it all um, besides black. So like that definitely kind of affects my identity and how people see me. Um, and, you know, also um, we, we are kind of like a pretty stubborn people, um, you know, being the only um, country in Africa not to be colonized, we kind of take that pretty personally with a lot of pride. So, you know, because of that stubbornness and that, that pride that we have, we definitely don't like to um, associate with um, other African countries, I guess, which kind of sounds harsh, but um, it's not out of hate, but we just have a lot of pride for our country and our culture. So, you know, again, what I'm trying to explain is that we don't really fit in any other category besides Ethiopian people. Um, you know, so growing up with that, with that background, um, I definitely struggled to like fit in um, pretty much anywhere, except for, you know, family and Ethiopian communities. Um, I mean, my elementary school was pretty much all white. So there was definitely um, that struggle there um, between um, obviously just, just race. Um, but then middle school, and high school was definitely more diverse, but it was interesting because I also struggled with my identity because there's a lot of diversity, a lot of black people. So on the surface, um, it seemed like there were a lot of people who were more like me, but I still felt disconnected because, you know, Ethiopians, again, don't really associate with um, other African countries, but that also goes for African Americans as well. Um, being immigrants, even though we still face some discrimination, because we were never locked into that systemic racism that African Americans were born into, we we can't relate on a lot of things. Um, so you know, it's um, beneficial for us. But again, there's that lack of um, connect between Black people and, and Ethiopians. So no matter where I went. Um, it was definitely a, a struggle to, to relate and connect. Um, so I definitely questioned my um, 
identity a lot, not knowing where I fit in and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, in general, um, I think um, identity can be, you know, really hard and have a huge burden and a weight on a lot of people, um, especially when, um, you know, maybe you don't fit into a, a certain group um, or you're surrounded by people not like you. So, um, you know, there are many reasons why um, identity can bring a huge weight. Um, so those are just some ideas that I had, so. I do have a, a couple of questions. My first one is, uh, how do you cope? So like you, you said, like, it, it's really hard for you to uh, fit in and, and identify with the Black community because of how uh, distant, so to say, that Ethiopian culture is from uh, the rest of African culture um, is kind of to itself and, and to a certain extent. How do you cope with, with living a life where you feel so that you can only associate yourself with a, a, a small portion of people? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy. And like, you know, I still struggle with that to this day. But, um, you know, something I realized was that like, um, even though it might be hard for me to kind of find that connection, you know, I realized at the end of the day, um, I still have a lot of similarities with black people, um, you know, not just about, you know, interests and stuff like that, but regarding struggle in this country. So um, I think that can definitely, you know, struggle unites people. Um, so that's definitely something. And, you know, I mean, I think it was my friend who talked to me about this the other day. But, um, I mean, he gave me some pretty, like, raw advice, I guess. Um, you know, he, he was telling me that, like, even if you struggle um, picturing yourself um, as belonging to the, you know, African-American community, um, you know, white people are going to consider you that. And, you know, you're going to face the same um, issues um, of racism and discrimination um, that other black people are gonna face. So like, um, you know, it was definitely real and raw. Um, I mean, it, it wasn't pleasant to hear, but like, it made, made me realize that like, to white people, you know, we're all the same. So like, um, even though it's, it's a negative effect of it, you know, I think it also helped me realize that like, um, I am a part of this community too. So um, I think that those things have definitely helped me a little bit. And um, my, my second one is like a, a two part one. One, uh, you talked about your native language when it comes to both your mother and your father's names. What is, your, what is the native language? What is it? Yeah, so um, the native language is, is called Amharic. Um, it's mm -hmm. just unique to um, Ethiopia only, but that's the, the primary language that we speak. That's right. So you did say that earlier. I was a, um, I just wasn't familiar with the term. Sorry. Um, and does your name have my my final question before I kick it out to everyone else? Does your did, does your name have a meaning a meaning that you kind of associate with and think that that pulls you and guides you along your course? Yeah. Um, to be honest, not really. Um, I think that actually that's another reason, kind of why I struggle with um, even my identity as an Ethiopian um, sometimes, but um, I mean, my name is pretty basic. I mean, it's Lucas, like, I mean, a bunch of white boys have that name, so it's not unique to Ethiopians at all, really. Um, I mean, my middle name is Shewan, which is um, Ethiopian. That was the, uh, the name of my, my grandmother who passed away a while ago. So, um, I mean, that kind of does draw me into my, to my culture a little bit, um, and you know, my last name is, is Tashoma, which is of course Ethiopian as well. So um, those, those names don't really have like significant meaning in our culture or, or in our language, but um, I guess my middle name, um, having it be my grandmother's name is, is pretty significant to me. But um, you know, of course that's not special to, to our culture. Um, you know, people do that all the time, so yeah. And um, do anyone else have any any questions for Lucas? Um, just about culture, name, anything that, that he said? 
Have you ever been to Ethiopia? I have once, but like I was like two years old, so I barely remember anything, which I regret. I'm, I mean, I want to go back. It just hasn't happened yet. But I think going back would really be beneficial for me. So I think that's important. What else? That's, I think that's really, really cool. Like, I did have this one question. That, um, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm going to go ahead and exit. Um, for people that feel lost, like for people that are, might, might be in the same boat when they, they struggle to find a group to identify with, or that that group is so small that it's like, you know, what, what would happen if I stray out of this group? You know, will I feel lost and stuff like that? in the wider world, what advice would you give them, you know, if someone never's in your, in your same situation? Yeah, um, I mean, it's hard, but, you know, I think even, even though you might struggle um, with that lack of, you know, connection with um, maybe a bigger community, um, I think sometimes, you know, you gotta be real with yourself. Um, I mean, you know, with me personally, like, like I said, I mean, of course I struggle with, with, you know, how I perceive myself, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, even like my friend told me, like, at the end of the day, I'm black, I'm African American, and that's how people are going to see me in this country. Um, so I think you got to be real with yourself sometimes, even if that struggle is still going to be there. Um, but, you know, I think also trying to um, be a part of that big community is also important. So sometimes you just got to be active and participate, um, you know, that's why, you know, I was really pressed about joining BSU this year, um, trying to find these communities that make sense for me. So I think that's just some advice. Well, thank you so much for sharing. If we don't have any other questions, um, uh, thank you so much. I, I yeah. greatly appreciate that. And, you know, it, it was interesting to, to hear, you know, just the, the different complexities of it. You know, like you would think that if you come from Ethiopia, like the heart of Africa, it's like, you're black, black. So it's like, you know, you shouldn't have any difficulties like aligning yourself with other black people, but it's really interesting to, to glean, you know, just, just the cultural uh, significance and, and the historical relevance of, of everything. So uh, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Yeah, no problem. All right, so um, let's move on. So um, Kayla Spiller, um, would you like to take the stage for us? I sure would. So hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so my name is Kayla Spiller. I am a junior psychology and criminal justice school degree at the one and only LVC. And I am very thankful to be here with you all tonight. You know, it's a good night. So I felt for me growing up, my topic is fighting against invincibility. And this sort of has, after listening to Lucas, there is a lot of correlation. Uh, so growing up, I felt that I had, I was conditioned to sort of have this body image that I was supposed to look like a Victoria's Secret model. And I think as we all know, built black women do not look like Victoria's Secret models. So, you know, it just, low self-esteem from the start like just just down so growing up I just looked around for other people for the validation I would look at like the Hispanic girls in grade school and like sometimes their hair was curly sometimes it was straight so I completely damaged my hair by like putting a flat iron on like 400 like you know really just trying I felt at the time I was trying to be something else be who I was meant to be and I was really just damaging my hair which was not good and also like the same thing occurred in high school I just felt like you know all the white girls in school like they all had that like small body they all had the, the straight hair I was like okay like this is what I'm supposed to look like and no still wrong like super wrong <laughs> so I just know like just at high school I really in high school a lot took a turn, like high school into college, there was a lot of finding myself. I know I would, it was either like you were too, you were too white to be with the black people and too black to be with white people. And even if you were with white people, like I know majority of my friends were white and it was just like, oh, because you hang out with them, everything that you do, like you're just white. Like, and it's just, okay. Like, you know, no, I'm not, but 
okay, relax. And so, but at the time, I mean, I'm a completely different person now, but at the time I used to like, like not believe it, but I'd let it get to me. I'd, I'd feel like, oh, people would be like, just because of the way you're speaking, like, you know, it was the really small things. And this, the stereotypes, it was all just due to like a lot of the negative stereotypes that black people are ghetto, uneducated, we don't know how to speak, like we don't know how to like represent ourselves and hold ourselves. So every time I go to like my friend's houses and they'd have like cookouts and stuff, like, yeah, I'm the only black person. I mean, it didn't really bother me. I grew up in a mixed household. So like seeing black and white, like you just, you know, see it all the time. And a lot of I know my family like we have just like we're just like a like a diverse group like we have a diverse friends so having different friends like it didn't matter to me because I looked at people like you know let's catch a vibe let's have a good time you know that's how that's how I was feeling still I'm still still for the least, same way so I just know I just struggled with feeling the representation I just felt like as a black woman that I didn't really have those people to look up to I know I was just really insecure about like just every part of my body, like my skin color at times when I was growing, like at times I used to, I felt like I used to emphasize that I was mixed because I was like, okay, people are, if I say like, I'm black, then people are just going to automatically like label me and it's just going to go downhill. And for some reason, it's like, it was having that mindset that like, white is right but um it, I mean, now i was wrong again <laughs> wrong still so I've, I've learned i've been learning and growing so i look back and it's like you know i pet myself it's like everything's okay so um yeah i felt really like just down about like my skin i felt like i wasn't the right complexion my hair like my hair should have been straighter and i just did a chop in march and oh it was the greatest thing i ever did if you ever want to cut your hair cut your hair because the growth is worth it but also i just felt really insecure about my features i always felt like my lips were too big and now people are paying millions of dollars to have my lips so let me tell you i i duck face selfies all the time all the time my lips are cute but i also just felt like insecure with like my height and my weight like just i felt insecure about myself altogether because i felt like i didn't see the representation like I was into like princesses and things growing up. So the first Disney princess didn't come out until 2009. I'm already nine years old. Like who's into princesses? I mean, I still went, I was still there for the hype. It was a black princess, like you gotta represent. But I mean, she was a frog the whole time, but at the time I'm still rooting, but now Disney, we're gonna, we're gonna have to talk because again, the representation as even a black princess character was majority like, a frog, a green frog, the majority of the movie, like fighting dark spirits, like, what is this? So, and also just like Black History Month, it comes around like once a year and like just during classes at those times, like the only thing that you constantly keep learning, or at least for me, it was that, you know, you guys used to be slaves, basically. Like there's just no history behind us at all. It's like, you know, they change you up and they, they ship you over like they didn't have to do it. and it's just like damn like, that's it like there was there's no history before that and i went to catholic school my entire life and you know the man on the wall the man i was praying to he wasn't even white like they had you know the the picture of like you, jesus was white everywhere in every church and every building he was he was white and he's you know jesus wasn't white Jesus wasn't white, he was from Egypt, he wasn't white, he was from Africa. So I felt like just, again, the representation is black people aren't, like it just wasn't there. Like our credibility isn't there, especially in America, especially for me growing up in America, it just felt like who was there to sort of look up to. So a lot of the time I was like fighting my true self because I really didn't know like who I was. I didn't know who I was meant to be. I felt I couldn't really go to like certain people because I felt like I really couldn't at times maybe not go to my family because we all look the same too. Like they all went through the same sort of problems. Like my grandma, she like, she tells stories like, you know, you know, when you start talking to like older people and they start telling you their life story, it's so cute. But you know, she, like she said, like she had to, um, you know, had to fight people because like people wanted to be like, you high yellow this, like you like light skin this, like yellow bone, like all of this, you know, just a lot of racial comments. And it's just like, she felt like she had to grow up and fight. And so like, as a psychology major, I learned about like fight or flight and how that can really cause like a lot of mental, like just imbalance and how that can also impact your health. 
And I see the generational effect. I see how it affects my mom and just some of her, you know, my mom, my mom's great. There's nothing really wrong, you know, me, you know, everyone has that thing with their mom. So, but yeah, she's great. But it's just, you see the generational effect. And I was also impacted by this because it's, it was a lot of the hardships that are brought on black people. She, even though she was mixed, she still lived in, referring to my grandma, even though she was still mixed, she still lived in like a lower class neighborhood, still had the low resources. And then like growing up, she like made sure you know how like middle class was really a thing like in the 80s and things like that so like working as much as she could to do what she had to do getting like 40 cents like not 40 cents like four dollars an hour like just getting really paid low so a lot of those the a lot of the hardships that are on black people like i grew up and it was like you're not really black because you hang out with these white people because you talk like this but i was going through the same hardships as every other black person i was still being like stereotyped still like still you know, having to go like without certain things, like without certain op like certain opportunities or things like that because of who I was. So like I was still being impacted, but there was like nowhere to be accepted. And so it was like there was no one to represent like that, you know, no one I felt to represent who I was or exactly who I was. So again, I was just fighting myself. I was like listening to other people's voices and opinions about me and you know it was trying to eat me up. Like it was just it was too much. Too too much. So that's when I'd say when I went to LVC, if you knew me in the beginning of LVC, you knew I was ready to leave. I was like, goodbye, I'm gonna go back to Philly. I'm gonna go to Temple. I want like life to be all fun and games. And in reality, LVC like, you know, sat me down and was like, you gotta get your life together. And you know, that's what I did. So, but I had a class called Higher Consciousness last semester. And I know Tat's gonna talk about spirituality, but I'm just gonna dip my toe in it really quick. Um, I just know like spirituality like derived and like really comes from Africa. Again, everything, you know, we're the first, you know, it all starts with us. But a lot of like things that we see in Buddhism and Hinduism that I look at, it all derives like, it all comes from, from a common place, that one place, Africa. And so that's what has helped me to like find my find myself like to fight that invincibility. Not even fight because when I've like started to learn in like the spiritual realm, it's like not even to like give negative emotion to it, just to give like compassion to it. So it's not even like okay, I, I lost my dinner box, but you know I'm gonna keep going. Uh, so I just started to look into myself and look into spirituality and that's when you know in spirituality you find yourself and finding who you truly are and that's when i got into law of attraction and manifestation if you know me oh i like to say i have some superpowers because i love manifesting and love it it's fun but um it's really you connecting with yourself and you believing in yourself and you trusting yourself and trusting that higher power so i was like sort of introduced by youtube but still introduced to like positive affirmations so i remember i sat down with myself i was on a deck and i sat with myself and i was just like how can i sort of stop that generational domino effect of how like you know like with i see how my how it impacted my grandma like my mom and me and it's like so how can i stop that domino effect and how can i stop that for all the other people in my community or all the other people who are like me who have dealt with those struggles of being different or just not feeling like they're worthy enough to other people like how can i sort of stop that and how can i make the next domino effect of like love and of peace so i sat with myself and i like got the idea of putting positive affirmations on t-shirts and that's for people to wear their affirmation like so you wear it in your mind and you also wear it on your shirt so uh currently right now this is the first one i made it says i'm at it's uneven it's first one it's first one but it says like i am happy and i mean my cats drop them um I make more, I'm in the process of making more. You know, everything happens in divine timing. A lot of teachers like to blow up my canvas. So again, everything is happening in divine timing. But I just, I don't know if you can see that, but it says like, I am beautiful and like, I am, uh, I am blessed. You know, like I am strong, I'm enough because I want people to know that about themselves. I'm, I don't want to be like, I'm selling you happiness, I'm selling you beauty because I'm not. Because you have to tell yourself 
these words. You are the one who creates your reality. And these are like, you know, really powerful words. So I tell myself every morning, in the middle of the day, at night, like I am happy, I am beautiful because I didn't have that growing up. I felt like I was so unworthy. I felt like I wasn't pretty enough. I just felt so down about myself. And then I had to go within myself and find who I was. And so that's why I want to help people go through that same process to just find the, their true selves. Like you're not chasing anything else. I'm not like filling your money because you're the one again, telling yourself like every morning, every day, like you're wearing this, this is what you're becoming. You're the one putting in the work for yourself. And so that's what I feel is like pretty important. So just keeping that high vibration. And when you tell yourself, these positive affirmations you start to attract better and so I just thought of like once you start telling yourself this positive psychology getting this muscle memory you start to attract better you start to get high vibrations so you know you can attract if you were had a low vibration of feeling unworthy then you keep attracting those people or those opportunities or those experiences that continue to prove your point of feeling unworthy so when you become worthy when you make yourself worthy and tell yourself, then you start attracting that. So I figured, you know, there's people out there, probably right now there's a girl who feels unworthy. She starts telling herself this like every day. She starts just working with herself and she starts to attract better. She starts like, she attracts a good job, good money, like a good lover, has a, like has a house, like, you know, like gets rid of the domino effect that she came from. So I wanted to keep that generational effect when I leave from this planet. So people still feel that energy of love going and especially as a black woman you know i really want people just to you know, find the true selves because it all is within us so that is all i have again thank you Khalil, and thank you everyone for listening i literally have nothing to say that was amazing all i have to say is just wow um i'm so uh, i don't i don't have the words to express it it's, it's a word called ineffable which just means a word that it's, it's a word for when you have no words. Um, so I'm going to open the, Do anyone else have any questions about... I do have one, sorry. You sell these. Where can we get them? Um, so back to divine timing. Um, you know, I'm so... <laughs> Still working on the logistics. You know, you, know, you know, there's so much that goes into the legal processes of owning a company. You know how much you yeah. gotta go through? You gotta like the taxes, the the yeah. agreements, like the legal process. I didn't know any of that existed. So you know I'm trying to get my papers right because you know they always trying to be out here snatching and stuff. So you know, I gotta make sure I own I'm on 10. Because you know, okay. you're not playing no games. But they're coming in divine timing. And I promise when it comes, you're gonna know. Oh, also, sorry, my company is called Unity Vibamins. So just like like the unity is one because this is meant to bring everyone together. Also, like these shirts, like they're not just staying in English. Like if someone's in Spain, like they're going to be in Spanish. If someone's in Turkey, they're going to be in Turkish. Because when you're walking around, people are going to be able to read in that country. Like you're walking around, like period. Like I am happy. I am beautiful. And when people read that in your country, they understand it. They know it. I don't want to like Americanize this or like make it English only because you know, who has time for that? So it's called unity vitamins and just like a vitamin is essential for your health a good vibe is essential so you already know the vibe mm -hmm. you know the vibes but that's that's really amazing um, do anyone have any questions for Kayla questions concerns reactions anything thoughts I mean I don't really have a question but I mean definitely I felt a lot of like uh, I, I related to a lot of things that you said so like I thought that what you said was pretty empowering um you know and like not just for me but obviously a lot of people struggle with with that so i thought that was empowering and you know i'm glad that you know your worth now because that's really dope so yeah i did have a question you probably didn't say this but i don't know if you were like if that was it or if it was like more to it if you're comfortable with it um are you okay with sharing that exact moment at lvc where you had that awakening of i need to be kayla spiller like, I know you mentioned that you took the class, but I didn't know that was just the class that that gave you that awakening or if it was something else. I definitely say that it, the class helped with like the spiritual realm of like opening the doors of like being more conscious, but becoming who I truly was and embracing who I was, that definitely 
got to give credit to BSU and just to a lot of the friendships that I made in like my early, you know, in just the beginning, because I like really instantly connected with a lot of like black people and which isn't like odd or like not normal, but it was just like from high school, it was like, everyone just looked at you like, oh, you only have white friends. And then it was like, no, like, you know, like it, I definitely felt that through BSU or just through like just being at LVC and hanging out with like people who like, you know, accepted me. That's what it is. They've accepted me. Like, and it wasn't like I was different. It wasn't like, oh, like, you know, light skin versus dark skin, any of that. It was like, it's either you're funny or you're not, like something like that. So that that definitely helped me a lot. And it just made me feel just so much more comfortable being who I was. Oh, and also SJI, can't forget. <laughs> Yes, S S A S J I was the moment. That that was the moment of my 2020 before everything went uh, <laughs> went went south. Um, but that that was the moment. Um, but if we do, we have any other questions? I don't wanna I don't wanna uh, stop anyone. If if you do have something to say to Kayla. All right. So. Um, that was really a, a, a good, that was really amazing. And if they don't know who you are now, they know now. Um, so please be on the lookout. You already know the vibes. You already know the vibes. Um, Kayla Spiller is bursting onto the scene, busting up the silence. Uh, so thank you, Lucas and, and Kayla. All right, Tatiana, take it away. It's your show. Oh, I'm going to stay, sorry, I'm, I'm going to stay unmuted because um, you wanted me to uh, prompt you or uh, give you questions or something. Um, yeah. So we just, we're going to fill this out. Yeah. Um, I'm Tatiana. I'm a senior at LVC, my major psychology. Um, it's been a long four years. It's been a long four years. And when Khalil had said that he wanted me to speak on, um, what was it again, Khalil? I, I, it just slipped my mind. I know it was like something human. Go ahead. Stories from someone overwhelmingly human. Yes, overwhelmingly human, like a whole bunch of negative away. And it was like, uh, I don't know how to really look at that. But along the way of Khalil coaching me through like that understanding, I came to a realization that since I've been at LVC, like Kayla Spiller, I had like my own awakening where I just wanted to be a human version of the earth. Like I just... Actually, during the pandemic, I just came to like, this realization that I am like the earth. There's nothing that is different between me and the earth. And that is so crazy to me because I love the sky. I love the trees. I love anything about the earth in general. And I think the one thing I like about it is the fact that it takes so much nonsense, like from all kinds of things. And I'm just going to say humans, for example, like we give this like negative and positive feedback and the only thing it can do is just be itself and just keep producing and just keep doing this thing in life. And if you think about it, that's all you have to do as a human. So it gave me like this, this realist approach to life in a sense. So it's like, I, I got tired of trying to be very optimistic. And I hate to sound like it, but optimistic for me is just like overrated. Like it, it just felt like, oh my gosh, every day I'm hoping to have like an amazing day. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm using my crystals, I'm meditating. And to a extent, it was working. It was working when I had those very high points and I could just maintain it. So I use like my crystals to maintain. I use my, my yoga. I use my positive thinking, affirmations, all that kind of stuff to maintain. But when I hit rock bottom, it was like nothing I could possibly do was just accept it for what it is and just move forward from it. So I appreciated that. I appreciated the fact that this is exactly what Earth do. I had to do the same thing. And I know it sounds so simple, but that's all it is. And I feel like... In the long run, we, as humans, we, we have to get a deeper understanding, a better meaning, and do this, that, and the third to make life much more than what it needs to be. And I'm just tired of that. And I hate to say it like that, but it, it, I can't do it anymore. And I feel like if I'm just real with myself and real with everybody else, that's all I need to do in life to keep pushing. So... That's what I understand. That's kind of short, but I mean, that is just simple as real as I can be. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, do, I do have a question. Um, so you kind of touched upon this a little bit, but what does the earth do for you? So like when you're, I, I know like a lot of times over the summer, you would spend countless hours, you know, in your backyard. 
what did that do for you to be around nature, to, to be in touch with the earth and take pictures of the sky and those type of things? Like, can you, can you share that with us? Like, like if we can get a piece of your tranquility? Yeah, it was just so mesmerized. I feel like the earth by itself is so beautiful. Like the sky, I couldn't, I couldn't be in love with nothing more than the sky. And I feel like I'm so in love with the sky because it's ungrabbable. I can't just touch the sky as I can, I can touch a tree. And I, if I could do that, it would just mean so much to me. And I feel often we get so caught up in what we think is beautiful is like something that is grabbable, materialistic things. I have to have the latest and greatest as far as like technology, clothes, shoes. I have to feel like I fit in. I have to be a part of society and the trends and all that kind of stuff. But when I was doing that kind of stuff, I didn't fit in. I've always felt like an outsider doing all of that kind of stuff. Um, when I had the ladies of greatest, I didn't feel like it gave me like a sense of accomplishment. I didn't feel like it gave me like a pure dream of happiness. So when I was outside and I was just staring at the trees, it was like I was making connections with my own life. And I know it's like, it sounds such like a very odd and weird thing, but it is what it is. It's, it's just... I feel like a true connection. I feel like I could just view my view my own life by looking at, you know, the world for what it is. And when I mean the world for what it is, I'm just saying like the earth doing what it's thing, the sun coming up every day, the moon leaving, rain, like just natural disasters and everything that's going on in this world. It kind of like making me think of the class I'm taking, the uh, ancient, what is it, ancient history, the class that Mikula has taken. So we've talked about a couple of like cultures where people were just trying to make understanding of the world by just kind of think of, of it as like a mythical story. And in a sense, I do that, but it's not as mythical, it's more personal, it's more relatable. Because it's like, it's, it's so, how can I give you like an example without getting so deep in it? <laughs> It's, it's just the fact that I can look at a dead tree and then years later go back to that dead tree and just look at it for like, oh my gosh, like you know what through this, that, and the third. And I could just see that within it without it telling me that. And I feel like you, you don't really get that from a lot of people. I mean, if somebody had to tell me, or I have to tell somebody, okay, for example, like I just said that, when it comes to me, a people, I feel like I give this, this perception I have everything like, you know, straight, that I'm a cool person, I can keep a smile on my face, I'm hardworking, I'm dedicated, and blah, 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 et cetera. But deep down, I have my own struggles, and I'm human just like everybody else. And I feel like it's hard for people to see that because I try to keep that perception. But when I look at a tree, I don't see it just being such a great tree because that's all it looks like to some people. I see it being like, oh my gosh, you fought hard. Like, I can see it. <laughs> I can see it within, like, this leaf is so perfect versus this leaf over here is just brittle, dry. Like, why is it part of you? But that was part of you that you need to be the tree that you are today, you know? That's really, like, that puts a smile on my face and not many things do that. Um, Sorry. That, that, that was what's so funny. I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't really talk like this, you know, to people. Like, mm -hmm. I, some people that I do talk to them about, like my love for nature is like, like my mom, for example, she's like something you, I love it. If you like it, I worry about you sometimes, but I think it's amazing that you think of it that way. And that's what you have to do. When you go about life, you have to make it work for you, obviously, because doing what everybody else is doing, it just wasn't working for me. And I was struggling terribly and I just need to figure out what was going to help me, you know, get through life. So that's why I think it's so funny when I tell people about it and I see their faces and their reaction. It's like, okay, I'm just going to like not talk anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I do have one other question before I kick it out. Um, do you have any pictures that you would like to share? Like, is there any way that you can share a picture of a, just anything? That's crazy. Like, I actually just, I just deleted like all my pictures because I'm like going through like a self detox of life. <laughs> But I actually just took this picture yesterday of this praying mantis. I don't know what's up, but praying mantis is just being by my side. Like, I just saw three within, like, the last two weeks. And I don't know. They're always popping up at me. Like, it's not like I just find it. It's just flying towards me. So I took this one outside of LBC yesterday, which is very unique because praying mantis are normally, like, bright green. So I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was so cute. But I, I had, before I did, like, a whole detox, I wish I could show it some kind of way. Actually, I can uh, send a picture to my brother, maybe. 
I took, I, I just love taking pictures of the sky. It's just such a, it's the only way I can grab it and hold on to it. You know, I can't actually just take the cloud where I would and put it in my back pocket forever. But, um, oh my gosh, this was actually the, the Sunday before the first day of classes I took this picture outside of Walmart and it was a storm like this story the, the story behind this picture is just funny in general but I'm not going to go like into that you guys and it's so beautiful and this is another like it's just ah. see stuff when I see this with the sober mind that I have it's, it's just immediate high for me it's just like oh my gosh like if I could just time out and real reality and just like, you know, walk to the sky for a second. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do anyone have any, any questions for Tatiana? So I can definitely, definitely applaud you on taking pictures of the sky because sis, this is what I do all the time. <laughs> and so that's what I mean. I can understand you because it's like, I, for me, I've always felt like it's like, it's so vast. This is something that like, this isn't sort of man-made. Like you're looking at trees, you're looking at grass, like being outside, looking at the moon, at the sun. It's like, this is something that it like, it works on its own, if that makes sense. Like this is like, I, don't, I definitely want to let you know. I have a question though. So what is your, where do you want to like where do you see yourself working like what do you see yourself doing because you sound like you're very like just like being like within yourself and then like you know coming out helping but then like really going within yourself and that sounds like i don't remember the exact occupation but it just it's just, it's like being just peaceful within yourself helping when it's necessary but like really focusing on yourself which is really good and please stay outside. I love being outside. That's where I had the idea with the shirts. Like outside, the air, the birds, the tree, everything. Applaud. Yeah. Um, so my biggest and main goal is being a clinical psychologist. Um, but besides that, of course, like everyone in general should have their side hustles and side businesses and all that kind of stuff. I also want to take a holistic life. I'm sorry, not holistic life, but a holistic um uh, career within psychology. So I could be a holistic psychologist, but I don't want to feel like that is, I don't want the, the mental part being like kind of contribute to like holistic lifestyle, which it very much can, but I would prefer it to be like my clinical psychology and then also doing like the holistic life approach by itself. So more like life coaching, like I said, in a holistic way where I'm just focus on the mind, the body, um, utilizing the earth, herbs, and all the resources that we have from the earth to like take care of our bodies. Because to be honest with you, this summer, I faced the most difficult challenge ever with my skin. Like I feel like my skin has never been horrible. Like I've had like acne growing up because that's just part of puberty, blah, blah, blah. But this summer, I don't know what it was. I don't know. And then I changed my diet, like, too. So it was, it could have been Corona. It could have just been stress. It could have been the temperature. Because I, I, I'm from South Carolina, but I lived up um, in Pennsylvania for four years straight. And I just kind of got used to this climate. And my skin is adapting. When I went home and I was using the same products I used up here, it just clogged in my pores. So, like, my face was just terrible. So I was going to my doctor. And they was recommending these products. Family members was recommending these products. I was on DIYs. I was taking like uh, prescriptions. I was on chemical stuff. And it was just like throwing me off. And I was like, this is, my face has never looked this bad. And it was kind of like hurting me a lot. But when I stopped taking that stuff and I just went to the basics of using the things from the earth, like my tea tree oil, not doing nothing but using like rose water as like a freaking toner, stuff like that. Like I just became... My skin is like now getting better, which is happy. And not even that, like the things that I put in my body for like a long time, I've had like this on and off, um, somewhat like vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian diet. And the thing is, once I paid attention to the stuff I put in my body, when I started to eat meat here and there, even fish too, like I just stopped eating fish again. But when I eat meat from time to time, my body was just, we grow stuck. It's like, oh my gosh, you're eating a cow. 
and it's not like I'm eating a hamburger. It's like, I just couldn't do it. So when I stopped doing that kind of stuff and I really just used the things from the earth and to heal myself, to te- to treat myself, I just became a whole lot better, a whole lot better. And I feel like when people just take a break from using all these things that you have to spend thousands of money, not I mean, that's just being like very extra, but spending like hundreds of money, I mean, dollars a month on a product that may not even work for you, but because your doctor prescribed it to you, you're gonna do it. You have this belief that it's gonna work for you when you could just go in your backyard, not literally, but when you can just get grass or something and it's going to help you out better than what you're paying hundreds of dollars for. Like, it's just, I would say give the earth a chance before you just, (laughs) you know, put all that chemicals and stuff in your body. It's just not worth it. So that's what I want to do. I want to really help people and just connect with the earth and use it for, you know, what it's here for. We're supposed to use it as much as, you know, it uses us in a way. So, yeah. Anyone else have, have a question for Tatiana? And look at that. You, you thought that she was done. You thought that she was like gonna be up here for five minutes. And I was like, no, <laughs> we're gonna, we gonna pull this out of you. Um, I did, I did. So I, thank you guys. And not even five minutes. You was <laughs> you went for like two <laughs> and a half. And look at look at this. Um, but thank you. Thank you for being open and honest and and just sharing, I know how, I'm gonna use the word sacred. I know how sacred this is to you. So I thank you for being open and vulnerable and, and giving us that piece of you. Um, we all should feel very honored and, and cherished on, on this phone call because we don't get that very often out of, out of Tatiana. Uh, so thank you once more. Um, all right, so we definitely don't have any more questions for Tatiana. Now we have V Lynn. So V Lynn, would you like to take it away for us? Sure. Um, so hi, um, my name is V Lynn Nguyen, and um, I'm a sophomore exercise science major at LVC. And um, first, I just want to thank thank you, Kulu, for asking me to be in this. I was like, at first, I was like nervous. I was like, oh, should I really do it? Like, should I just say no or should I say yes and be nice? I don't know. But I was like, oh, think about it. Maybe I should. And then um, second, I just want to like applaud everyone before me who went like, I couldn't even think of any questions because like, I was still taking in like the vulnerability and everything. It was like literally amazing. I was like, wow, now I'm gonna sound stupid, but it's okay. (laughs) Okay, so um, I wrote a little couple notes down. So, okay. So my topic is the power of names and weight of identity. So Again, my name is V Lin, and I am a Vietnamese American. And um, the power of names like kind of hit me a little bit more than like all the other topics, just because like you don't hear the name V Lin like anywhere. Like I haven't heard it anywhere else. So like it kind of hit home to me because the everything like who you are, like your identity, it comes from your your ethnicity, your cultural background, your name, your religion, your sexuality, any, all of that. And for me, like what I struggled with the most was just like my name. And I was just like, yo, it shouldn't be like this difficult, you know, because it's just a name. But Vilin and like the way it's spelled, like it's not like a clear slate. Like you have to get it, like you have to hear it first to like maybe know how to like say it so for me I've always been like oh I kind of hate my name because like no one can ever say it right so like all through middle school and stuff I'd have to say no my name's Lynn. like oh Lynn, I'm next whatever but like it's always been like a struggle for me because it's just like hard why can't I have an easy name but but as I like grew up I kind of like realized like hey like my culture is like who I am and it's what I identify with. And even though like maybe there aren't a lot of people with my name, like I was like, it makes me kind of unique, I guess. So like, I don't know that, (laughs) but um, for me, my identity as like an Asian American, it was kind of difficult for me to hold on to my culture being here in America, just cause like, oh, people can have different stereotypes about like being Asian or whatever. 
and it's like hard to hear because some of them are just like negative like oh you're you have to be good at math like if you're not good at math are you really asian like that's just like annoying you know like <laughs> i don't yeah but <laughs> so i think mostly i think it was maybe last year that i kind of embraced who i was because seeing like other asian americans like do so well and like succeed makes me want to like mirror that because i can have that opportunity too um I don't, I don't even know like i lost everything but so i just wanted to talk about my parents too and like the importance of your name so my parents came from vietnam and i saw this like thing on the internet like just like this caption thing like oh did your parents really come all the way here and work so hard and like gave birth to you everything just so they can call your name wrong or just to, so like people can make fun of your name like no they they didn't come here to be made fun of they didn't come here to get all these insults so like you have to do something about it and i was like that just kind of stuck with me because i'm like you know i really don't it seems like i'm not doing anything and like i feel bad now but like i think more and more as I grow up, I'm trying to realize that. And like, I don't, and my parents don't deserve to be called something like, like an insult. And that like brings me up to like something else that happened that kind of blew up. I don't know if y'all saw, but um, there's this girl who has this um, Vietnamese name. It's Phuc Bui. And the way it's spelled is P-H-U-C and then B-U-I. And there was this professor from this college saying like, oh, can you like, is there something else we can call you because it's an in insult to English? And there were plenty of times where that girl was like, that's my culture, like why, like, why can't you just like respect that? But that professor was just like, I've said it once and I've said it again, I'm gonna repeat my, like what I'm asking, like you have to like change it or do something else to it because it sounds like an insult. And when I saw that, I was like enraged because I was like, like, that's so annoying and like disrespectful. Like, like, how is that okay? And like, thank God she got like the justice she like deserved with that um, professor being like let go. But just knowing that like this happens like in this day and age, like how's just, how is that possible? Like, it's it's crazy to me. So like, I think that's just something that kind of stuck with me a lot because I could be in that situation even though like my name doesn't look like an insult to English but um yeah I think that just like twists my turns <laughs> but um something else that the power of names has like in me is there there are a lot of times where like I'm in class and my teacher's like violin um, are you here or Violin? What do you think about this question? And like, I I still find I, it's hard for me to find the confidence to say like, oh, my name's actually pronounced Violin. And I'm still I'm still like trying to get that confidence. Like it's just like it's just time that I need. But um, I think like I don't know how I'm gonna find that confidence. Maybe maybe this talk is like gonna be how, but like. I sometimes I just don't know what to do in that situation. Like even just today, I went to Starbucks with my sister and they asked me what my name was and I said, Olivia. And I was just like, oh, why did I say that? I'm literally going to like a talk today like and recording why that's not okay. And like, I don't know, it's just hard. Like, you know, like it's V Lynn, whatever, V Y L I N H. But I'm, I'm still trying to find like the confidence to say it's V Lynn or like, I guess I don't even know like help people know like the importance of my name that like it's not something to just put aside um what I like oh my god so <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say through all of this is that like it's important to know who you are in terms of like your identity your name everything that makes you you I guess um like I don't know <laughs> It's just so much that I feel like it's hard for me to unpack, but that that's all. That's kind of all I have right now. <laughs> no, I, 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 where you ask a question, Khalil. No, 
I just want to say your name is so, 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 so beautiful. So beautiful. You know? Like that's, oh my God. So <laughs> Thank beautiful. you. Like I, you know, first of all, one, cause I've heard Khalil says like, say so much about you like so much good stuff about you and before I don't never know who Khalil's talking about because like I obviously don't be active on campus as much as like I used to but like I wanted to see this person like Vlan 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 and I'm like that is such a beautiful name and I saw as you like I love it I love it and I just want you to know that you have a beautiful name and girl forget Starbucks if they can't say your name <laughs> let them know like this is my name Vlan get it right Thank like you, you have to own it because it's such a beautiful freaking name and like you have to also remember like you don't know anybody else named Velen. like I don't know anybody else named Velen. so if you're the only v let's you need to pretend like it like you are the only Velen out here so if you're the only Velen out here you need to be like okay I am the Velen. own it girl I, love like, it. I don't know if you know like how much that like means to me in the heart like <laughs> and I'm giving Thank it you so much. my heart <laughs> Go ahead, Quill. Sorry, I just had to add that in there for it slipped my mind. No, I, I like I'm loving every moment of it now. I don't. What I was going to say is, and I don't like minds can't compare it to what Tatiana said. Well, the reason as to why I wrote that question, um, well, that that prompts is because you come into this world with your name. You know, you come into this world, and when you think about it, when you're a baby, you have nothing. You have absolutely nothing besides the name that your parents give you. And when you leave this world, technically you don't have anything besides the name. And your name is like, it resonates throughout the world. And so if someone doesn't say your name right, miss, like spells it wrong, mispronounces it, or something along those lines, it's, 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 it's really like a disregard of, of, of your soul, of your spirit. They, it's like they toss it out and they not even recognize who you are as a person. And so that's why I think it's so important that people say names correctly like I, I'm, I'm always I, I try to make sure that I always say names correctly I try to always make sure I spell it get it right I hate spelling people names wrong I hate pronouncing them wrong because it's just like a disregard of who they are it's kind of like I'm just it's like they're dead you know it's, it's, it's you're, you're not giving life to that person so thank you for speaking on that um and and take what Tatiana said take this talk today and just empower yourself to make sure like this is who you are. This is the essence of your being is your name, you know, and, and your name carries so much weight. That's why I added the weight of identity because your, your name carries so much weight in, the, in this world and it just resonates and ripples out. So don't have anyone tear that away from you. Don't let anyone take your identity away from you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening too. <laughs> anyone else have anything to say to me, Lynn? Yeah. Uh, I think like it's um, very also important like just to represent like who you are through your culture especially like with your name because um, like I've been getting like my last name is Gidry and like uh, it's Creole French and so like people always like either add letters to it or take letters away from it um, and it, it's more often now, like people can't even say Elijah, you know, they'll ask me, oh, how do you spell Elijah? Or, you know, I go to Chick-fil-A and I tell them like, my name is Eli, just say Eli. Cause it seems like not to, 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 to call anybody out, but white people, they love calling me Eli. And so I think, oh, if I just say my name's Eli, like they're going to get it right. And then they'll spell it correctly, E-L-I. And then I'll get to the window and it's like, oh, are you Ellie? Who's Ellie? Like, <laughs> and you know, it's like, it's just like, like you have to, like, I'm starting to also like feel like, okay, well, if you can't even say Eli, like I'm going to say Elijah, you know, and like, I, I want you to say my name correctly because this is who I am and v is who you are. Like, you have to stand up for not just yourself, but the culture that represents your name. And it's very important. Yeah, that's like, that's, that's just crazy too. like, knowing that other people kind of go through the same, same things that I kind of go through, I guess that, that makes me feel like kind of better, but like, not like, oh, that's a good thing that people go through that. But like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, like, I'm glad that like, that's pain. <laughs> 
share the same comment, I guess. <laughs> but but yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. That's amazing. Hon honestly, Vila, remind me at the end of this call to sing you all the pronunciation. This man right here that's on this call, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him out. I have like a thousand and one pronunciations of my name, and this man right here. Um, <laughs> I live, but when the first time he texted me, this is the story that I always go back to. The first time he texted me, he was like, hey, Khalil. And it was K H A. It was K H A L I O. So um, but you know, now he now he get it right unless you want to be uh an a ho and call me K Leo or something like that. But my, remind me to send you a list other pronunciations I got for my name, but that, that was another driving factor. But you said earlier about how you kind of feel disconnected from Vietnamese culture because, you know, you're living in America. And I'm just going out on a limb. Is VLIN kind of like that thing that, is that one element that ties you permanently to Vietnamese culture? Um, my name is one thing. I wouldn't, I guess so, but also just like, I went to Vietnam like three years ago, I think. 2017 was three years ago. So like I went for a month and seeing like just all like the different things like in Vietnam. Oh my gosh, like I like I associate with that culture. Like that's amazing to me. Like everything that I saw like changed my perspective on literally everything. Like being in like the United States of America gave me so much like I don't know. I was thankful because I don't know going to that country with like nothing like it's crazy like how am I living in this house in my own room with a laptop with a phone while my aunts and uncles in Vietnam are literally living in a, like a house with a open door with like barely any roofing like that's just crazy to me and just like seeing how they can be so happy in that with all the culture that they live in, it it made me like believe like, oh, like this is something that I need to embrace. So yeah. I also just want to add a little tiny input. I just want to say that again, as everyone already has said, your name is very beautiful. And I want to thank you for your vulnerability. But also, um, I just know I again gonna to add to the bandwagon. I agree because I know in grade school there was one teacher, not grade school, high school, there was one teacher and she would call me Kayla. Like, and I promise you, if you look at my name, you can separate my name and it still comes out the same way. It's Kayla. You can take out the A and the Y, you still get Kayla. But for some reason I was Kayla and I, you know, I don't know where it came from. But just preferably because I didn't really enjoy her. I just didn't care. I blew it off because I like disregarded her like existence but with everyone else for you like i i really go by spiller besides with khalil who's my full government but i usually really go by spiller and for me like when people say my name it's like they know like people know who they're talking about when they say like when they say my name like i won't even be in the room and like when you say my name people instantly know who i am they know like they picture me and so with you and your name like you got to do the hair flip with your name like your name when the professor says it it's like a yes it's vlan like like this is some unique organic like goddess in engraved name like this is your name so definitely i think it's very beautiful because i might just add it to like, one of the little baby books i'm not having the babies but it i mean it's cute like, it's such a cute name so again just um, please embrace it because it is so beautiful B -B that's what it is. B-B-Lin. <laughs> Y'all are like boosting my confidence and I did not ask for this, so thank you. <laughs> that we be giving it to you because we felt that spirit told us to give it to you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, if y'all don't mind, I mean, since everyone else taught, I feel like I should say, say something too. But hey, you, got, you, you got to now, jump yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, but like, you know, seriously though, like, I mean, just like everyone said, your name is like really dope so you know definitely I hope you know that but um I mean and I definitely understand like what you were saying with you know how you struggle with your name I mean personally I don't struggle with that I mean like I said it's my name is pretty bland it's as white as it can get really so I'm not unique in that way but um you know um 
I actually used to appreciate that, you know, growing up. But like now, I'm kind of jealous, you know, being surrounded by people in my friend group and family who have like real, you know, authentic names to our culture. Like, I just think that's so dope. And like, I'm not saying I hate my parents for giving me the name I have, but like, you know, like sometimes I wish, like, I wish I had, you know, an authentic name like that because I think it really does um, bring a lot of power to you um, as a person and it definitely brings a lot of connection to your culture. Um, you know, I know um, if and when I have kids, you know, I definitely plan on giving them a really uh, authentic name and unique name. Um, and, you know, I think that's definitely something I want to do. Um, but, you know, definitely, again, to touch on like, that struggle, you know, in the classroom with friends, whatever, with like your name and stuff. I mean, that just goes to show like how toxic our, our country is and like the whole culture. Like people just wanna tear you from your ident identity um, and just like disrespect you. I mean, just like, you know, Khalil was saying, like if someone doesn't take the time to get your name correctly, spell it correctly, that means they don't really care about you enough. Um, so, you know, I understand that you struggle with that confidence of like correcting people. I mean, I know I would struggle with that too, but like maybe something that will help is that like, take it personally. Like if a teacher, whoever doesn't say your name right, that's like a form of disrespect. So, you know, um, again, I know it's, it's hard to do that, but like just another way to see it. But yeah, I mean, just know your name's dope, so, yeah. Thank you. It really, mean, it really, really, like, a thousand million infinity percent, like, thank you. Like, it means, like, a lot. You're going to be on your way to Starbucks after this call and uh, redeem yourself. Um, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say you played too much. <laughs> <laughs> about to tear something up in Starbucks when you leave here. Um, but thank you so much, v -Lin. Um, Are there any other last comments for v -Lin before we move on to our, our finale? All right, so Elijah, the stage is all yours. Hi, my name is Elijah. Uh, I used to attend LVC uh, my freshman and junior year uh, as a AMP major, but currently yeah, I do not attend LVC currently. I do not attend any school. Uh, but my topic today is speaking talents. Um, so uh, I'm going to, uh, I have three poems that I wrote uh, that I'm going to uh, speak, I guess. Uh, and then uh, I have some pictures uh, that I took. I do photography, uh, videography as well. Uh, I actually have a lot of talents. Uh, just to dive into that. Um, music, I rap, I sing, I play piano, I play saxophone, uh, a few other instruments. Uh, like I said, I do photography and videography uh, and edi editing as well, um, which are all self-taught, which is amazing. Uh, you can teach yourself anything. Um, I write poetry, um, like I said. Uh, so yeah, so we're just going to dive into it. Uh, the first one is untitled. Um, <clears throat> Hold on, one second, Elijah. Do you want us to like unmute ourselves and like do the whole, you know? <laughs> it doesn't I, matter. I was gonna do that anyway, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody unmute yourself and uh, get, get your snack ready. <laughs> okay, is everyone ready? Okay. Um, <laughs> I am at the point where nothing is working. I am too old to be a child, but too young to be a man. Upon many faces, I see a look that is satisfyingly distasteful. I am there to make you laugh, here for you when you cry. All the while you make me feel as though I need to hide. It is displeasing to know I can be me, but cannot. To know that I love me when others do not. For at which point do you become a man if others treat you as not? For which point can you act like a boy, but within you are not? Why do we look to satisfy others when others will never be thankful at all? 
when they don't answer your texts or return your calls. Learning is the key to life, yet we, do, we don't try escaping the trap of our mistakes. So you must learn who you are and not dismay because there are some challenges we just can't fight. But losing myself is a toll I simply will never pay. So that is the first one. Then uh, this one is called Destiny. Hidden from beauty, masked in sin, loved by art, deprived within. Take a whistle and blow, deep down inside, nothing is all you know. A want for more uprises, but murder, you can't hide it. Slashes to the arm, bruises left in disgrace. Running seems feasible, but fear takes its place. So what to do now for your crimes? Should you burn at the stake? Submerged in ashes, so life grows in its place? Holy, holy is thee that knows its place and is afraid to be free is afraid what to be. Here lies the debt and sins of a lost soul that wasn't lost within. To feel a purpose and belong, yet no, yet knows it was so far from home. There is nothing one can say when the search for purpose is underway. For greatness is what is destined, but my skin is all I'm left with. And that is the end of Destined. Uh, and then the last one is called Title. <clears throat> hip, hip, hooray, the sound of celebration. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray, <laughs> the sound of sarcasm. One sentence, two directions. Is it fair to be surrounded by questions? A question it is, but no one dares to ask it. We always feel uncertain, devoting our lives to people who live without purpose. What is the purpose of a lamp? To provide light, yet all the light is held back? Hidden behind the shade, we get what's left. What if the shade covered it all and there was nothing left? Is a person a lamp? Mark with approval, yet wait delivery without a stamp? Should we throw the lamp away, serving a purpose yet covering the display? If we did this, will we never have the chance to view the light? Even covered, it shines brightest at night. So remove the cover, seems easy, right? If so, why have a cover if all it does is dim the light? And that is titled. Hmm. Oh, hi. Uh, let me see if I can share the screen and if that works. So uh, I have host disabled. Okay, the host disabled participant screen sharing. So again, the host enabled participant screen sharing. Should be good now. Okay. Um, Safari, I think, share. Allow Zoom to share your screen. Oh, I can't share this. Oh, because I have to quit Zoom and then come back into it. Um well let me let me pull it up on my phone. How about that? I just had already had it like prepared. So what okay. Um so uh I just I'm just gonna show a few of my favorite edits that and pictures that I have taken. Um you might recognize some of these people from campus. Uh so this uh oh shoot. Luckily, I don't have anything inappropriate. <laughs> but this is Julia. Uh, you might know her. She's a senior. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures I took of her. Um, uh, 
I forgot his name, but I did a shoot of him a couple of weeks ago for his birthday. Uh, this is one of my favorite photos by him. Um, let's see. I'm pretty sure we all know this person. This is my beautiful friend, Shelby. I took this of her. Love her to death. Uh, and one more. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Trying to work this website. And this is someone else. Um. So just for a little talking point, like um, I think it's amazing. Um, like when we look at you know our NBA, our NFL players, like our talents as Black people. Um, are like some of the most important things that um, like get noticed um, in America. And, and it's sad that, you know, having to have a talent in either a professional sport or some type of artistry is what people will say like, oh, like, oh, it doesn't matter that he's black, you know, like he's great at like this and that, like, when it shouldn't be like that. It should be like he's great as as at being a singer, at being a, a poet, at being a writer, at being a, a football player, a basketball player, you know, despite the color of my skin. Um and so that's why like I have taken on like learning like different artistic things because the arts is something that has always been appealing to me. Um so yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> um, I'll let the wolves come at you first. Um, before, I, before I say anything. Anyone have any questions for Elijah about his poetry, uh, photography, or just art in general? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess from a personal experience, um, when I was a kid, like I used to like doing like a lot of, um, I don't like to think of myself, I, I guess I could say I was talented, but like I would just do like a lot of different things because like I had the ability to do it, which is awesome. And I felt like when I was younger doing all those things at once, it was like a distraction for me to take uh, my mind off of like the environment, like the things that I was going through. And I was just wondering, is that something that, is it like a coping strategy for you to be so active and so talented and in all the things that you do? Or like, is this just something that is like just pure enjoyment for you? Like, like what what exactly does it do for you being so talented? And I think um, as a kid, uh, I started writing poetry as a way to escape um, and also like put my feelings in the words. Um, and that grew into like I've always been into music from church choirs and then school choirs and stuff like that. Um, so that started to 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 mix and and blend into writing music and rapping and singing. Um, I think it did start out as an escape for me, as a, a way to feel freer. Um, and even with music, like it still does. Like um, it, it's a way for me to express myself in a way that. I feel just saying it doesn't work. Um, and then like with photography, um, I had a problem with my body image um, growing up. I felt, uh, well, I was, I didn't just feel, people told me like, I was either too fat, like too loud, you know, like um, I didn't look, you know, like appealing and stuff like that. And so photography uh, was a way for me to, I started out like, just taking pictures of myself, you know, being more confident in who I am and, and saying like, it's not about what other people think. It's about what you think of yourself and how you view yourself. And I feel like once I took on that, that persona of, you know, I love myself, no matter what other people say, then like other people, like, it was like, oh, like, you know, oh, you look good, you know, like, oh, you know, and, and it's like, I always look the same, like, <laughs> And it's crazy to me, you know, like how self-confidence, 
you know, in yourself can really build, you know, and show on the outside and not just on the inside. I have. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, first, I just want to say, like, I really love like seeing people do like photography, like, but it's different because I like even though like it's such a small screen to see like the pictures that you took something about them just like it's like it's different because you can like I don't know seeing like people taking pictures of people like it's different for everyone but looking at yours we're like there's something different and like you can like see something behind it mm -hmm. I think I don't know how like the editing the picture taking was going but oh my god I was like yo that's like actually really good cool. but also I actually thought about a question so I think like people in the arts are literally amazing and I don't I just don't know how or like people get like inspired by that but like I, I don't know if this is a dumb question or not but like do you have like uh, I guess like a muse or something that, or like something like inspirational that like helps you come up with like these poems and stuff um I don't know not not I wouldn't say not necessarily my mom um, she was in, in the poetry, uh, really big. She did slam poetry. She was amazing. Uh, I wish I could show y'all. I mean, I have a video if y'all were willing to let me find it for a second. Um, but yeah, she was, she, she's what got me into poetry. Um, and like I said, she was amazing. Um, and she just passed and marched. And I think that like, she propelled me to to want to to be better um and she she pushed me because i think she saw something in me that she seen in herself as well um and me being her first child it was like i want you to do all of the things that i couldn't do you know like you know be the artist you know go out here and have those concerts and perform you know do what it is that you love and i really think I think that she was my muse or is my muse still to this day. Uh, give me one second. Mm. Okay, here she goes. Keep me each and every day. For in the morning when I wake, my heart aches at the level of hate that surrounds us day to day. For we are living amongst children who feel to take a life is their self. So when you I place my faith, and daily I wait for a deliverance for this race. While I pray that by your will won't be my children's faith. You see, I have two sons. With a daddy, they have none. And for those who choose to shun, I can't undo what's been done. But where my strength comes from is knowing that that battle's already won. Isaiah 4, verse 4 and 17 says, Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youthhood. And you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. So when my past comes against me and says, this is what you used to be, I'll say, I'm glad you know my history. Now, no, my God has forgiven me. Yeah. 
to keep praying with no ceasing. For my time is near is what I believe in. For I also have three daughters, and that's three daughters with no father. But for me, it ain't no father. It just means I gotta work hard. I know to depend on Jehovah Jireh, for the Lord is my provider. But you see, three plus two is five. That's five reasons to stay alive. Five reasons for me to live right. Dress right, talk right, and act right. For I am the one that they look up to. The one when they're down that they come to. Or when this world takes them through what I've been through. And when they're lonely, lost, and confused too. And it's Jesus who I'll direct them to. Because if this world only knew, if he can keep a woman like me, boo, he'll show no keep you too. <laughs> I know that's right. I know. <laughs> I know that's right. Loved it so much. So, yeah, I think like you know, just seeing like how words can can get anybody through anything. Like, it really it really helps. Um, real quick, just for logistical purposes, AJ, do you think it may be best if uh, Elijah, if you're comfortable, for us to get that video so that we can. Do something like embed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, AJ, like, how do you how do you think we should go about yeah. the video? Yeah, that'd be fun. If 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 it's on YouTube, or whatever, just send me the link, and I'll see if I can rip it, and then I can kind of put it over top, if if you want, when it's playing, if you're comfortable. With that that. Was, yeah, it was a Facebook video. Um, oh, okay. I might can see if it's on YouTube. I, we can we can keep in contact before this uh it's uploaded. Okay. Cause I might can just screen record it and just send it to you. Oh yeah, that works too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um uh Lucas, you had a question, right? Yeah, I mean not a question, but um definitely want to comment on what you said, Elijah. Um I mean, first of all, definitely um after watching that little video um, of your mother, I mean, what she had to say was beautiful. Um, that was really empowering. So um, yeah, she's amazing. Um, but I also wanna let you know that um, you being you know, this talented um, and, and so inspired to, to kind of live your life to the fullest, um, I know your mother's definitely proud of you. So I hope you know that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, in addition, um, I mean, with all the things you said that you do um, in the arts, like, I think that is so dope. Like, I got so much respect for people um, as talented as you are. Um, unfortunately, God did not bless me with those <laughs> skills and talents. So, you know, I'm definitely, you know, jealous. I wish I could sing. I wish I could, you know, play all those instruments. And I, I know you can teach yourself, but sometimes it, it's just talent. So. Um, I definitely got a lot of respect for you for that. Um, but, you know, something I want to touch on is that, like, as a culture and as a people, like, um, I was going to say Black people, but almost everyone from all the cultures are just, like, so talented and have, like, so much to offer in this world. So I think that's something, like, we should really value more in seeing people. Um, mm -hmm. But to talk about, like, Black people in particular, like, if I'm honest, I think that those are some of the most talented people in the world. Um, I mean, literally from everything, um, from like our music to our style, to like our athleticism in sports, to our dancing, to our drip, like we got everything, you know what I'm saying? Um, and like throughout history in this country, black people have um, offered so much, but of course it's been um, stripped from them and taken by white people. But, you know, that goes to show you just like how talented that we are. I mean, almost every music genre was stolen by white people and made popular um, from, I mean, literally everything. So, um, and even today, you know, with our rap artists, like you got white boys wanting to be like us, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, I, I think it's really empowering and inspiring just to see like, um, another black person like you um, expressing your talents um, and stuff like that. So um, I hope you know, you know, your worth and you see your talent. Obviously I think you do. So, so yeah, that's dope, man. Thank you. 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 Th
I have a question before Khalil starts talking. Go. Um, so one, I just wanted to say, wow, your mom's video was just beautiful. I see where you get it from. It was the honesty about it. I know in one, I'm sorry, let me, sorry. Sorry, Khalil, my cat was bothering me. Um, I just the honesty, I know in one of your poems that you talked about, oh, I wrote it down, it's a bit satisfy others like that don't care. And I felt like that really hit because I know like I felt like like it's been like a working progress, but like releasing a lot of codependent behaviors because I used to rely on people to um sort of validate me or I'd really like change myself for their approval. And so I definitely can say like with just hearing your mom and hearing you, it's just like like you see the magic like it's it sounds it's so good it's so authentic and it's so real and so my question sorry I'm really scared my cat's gonna climb my leg and it hurts um so uh my question was is like when do you get like your when do you get your best thoughts I know like for me a, a little alongside with Ty is that like just being outside so like is there like a certain time and moment where you feel like you get like your best sort of like momentum going to just like you know go all in i think um to to go back with tatiana said i'm a man of of the earth and feeling uh inspired with uh being outside um and also taking part in, in some of the the things that the earth has blessed us with um, can really like, what's the word? Bring my psyche to a more fragile state to be open to to being able to discuss certain certain things. Um, and just at night, like I'm, I'm really a night person. I'm not a morning person. Um, and I feel like a lot of my creative thoughts do come closer to the nighttime or like, you know, 1, 2 a.m. Um, Cause sometimes like, even if it's just a spur of a moment, like thought, like, you know, I write something down um, and might look at it later um, to, to, to more cohes cohesively put it together. Um, but I think like at night, uh, really, um, it really draws a lot of my creative juices. I don't know why, but. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Like they, psychologists have done research that show that the most creative people uh, are night people. Um, and that that's when you do your most creative stuff because that's when people don't mess with you. Um, so you can get, get the stuff out. Um, my question, I just have one question. I mean, it's just like from one artist because I, I classify myself as an artist to another artist. And I honestly think that to call yourself an artist when you don't literally paint is like the highest order of art so like even like if you're a photographer that do photography extremely well if you are a dancer if you are a writer if you're a singer i literally call that like an artist um and there are very few people that i give that distinction to like janae aiko is somebody that i give that to um a boogie is someone that i give that to so it's like certain people that i deem as artists so my question is what do you think makes an artist? Like, if it, just just the label of artist, what what does it mean to be an artist for you? I think like you have people out there who do have talents. You know, people who are really good singers. You know, people with who have voices that you know can rap over beat. You know, and it sounds nice. Um, but I think those are more like entrepreneurs. You, entrepreneurs you know who can who know how to make money and go out here and uh do what is necessary to keep a stable income um i think like for an artist it, it's it's about the nitty-gritty you know it's the passion behind it it's uh knowing like okay like 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 for example uh i love beyonce and one reason I love Beyonce is because with everything she does, she learns every aspect 
of it. You know, when she has concerts, she she learns about the lighting, she learns about the audio, she she's learning these dances, she's teaching these dances, you know, from the song when it comes to producing the music, you know, and stuff like that, writing the music. It, it's all about what, not just the plain surface, not I'm just gonna go out here and sing this song. I'm not just gonna go out here and rap this song, you know, because somebody wrote it for me and I have the ability to do so. It's more of, I'm gonna go to greater lengths to learn everything it is about what it is that I'm doing to be the best at it that I can be, you know, whether it's mainstream or whether it's, you know, uh, underground music uh, or, you know, anything from, uh, painting to photography to writing books, writing poetry. Like, not everybody out here is, you know, gonna be famous for what they do, but it's about how much work and effort that you're gonna be willing to put into your artistry that makes you a real artist. Thank you for that. Um, do anyone else have any, any last questions? Um, for Elijah, or just we're at the end. So, any questions, any comments about about anything? Something did spur to me um, from Lucas uh, that I wanted to ask um, about your uh, points uh, about identity. Um, I know you say your mom and your dad are Ethiopian. So how does finding like identity with like dating, like, you know, is, is, is that a struggle for you to, to, to want to date somebody else of Ethiopian culture or somebody black who, you know, doesn't really identify with, you know, African culture, but is African American? Um, like how, how do you go through that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think in general with, um, Ethiopian parents and families like um, there's kind of like that expectation um, that you know you'll marry another Ethiopian um, just to kind of keep that tradition going um, but I have to admit and my parents are um, definitely have strayed away from you know overall that like um, stereotypical and kind of like um, stubborn Ethiopian um, mentality so I never really felt the pressure to um, find someone um, who is, you know, Ethiopian. Um, I mean, I've dated um, people outside of um, my culture before, um, but I also dated um, someone who was Ethiopian. Um, I mean, that was kind of a coincidence. I wasn't really like planning on that, but um, I think it made me realize I do want to potentially marry an Ethiopian just because like of the things that we can relate to on a deeper level um and I think I think it helped me also like kind of um connect to, to my Ethiopian culture as well because um that is something I struggle with a little bit so you know I just definitely found a lot of benefit from um, meeting someone who's also um Ethiopian and kind of shares the same you know, principles, values, and beliefs, and, and culture as me. Um, but, like, to answer your question, like, I wouldn't say I'm, like, actively looking for Ethiopian. Um, and in the past, I wasn't actively looking for someone outside of my race. And that was because of um, kind of, like, the um, my parents being chill and all that. So it, it's not really a big issue for me. But I know for other people it is. I also had a question for you too, Lucas. Um, what is one thing about your culture that you value the most? Like one thing that you, if it was the only thing that you could value, what would it be about your culture? Yeah, um, I think probably kind of just um, the love that we have uh, for each other and kind of like that family over everything mentality. Um, because, you know, the the way it is in our culture, like someone is either family or they're a stranger. There's like no in between, like, you know, in, in American culture, you know, you have like 
um, second cousin, third cousin, you have like a friend, you have acquaintance, like that just does not roll in our culture. Like if you like someone as a person and you want a relationship with them, they'll quickly, like you'll be treated as family and you also get that um, same energy reciprocated. And I've seen that forever. I mean, just the way, um, you know, if, you, if I run into, or our family runs into an Ethiopian family in the store, like the way we just bond and connect, we'll immediately, you know, get invited to dinner, like as soon as possible. And from there, you know, a beautiful um, relationship comes out of that. And a lot of um, our family friends um, have come from that, just random encounters. Um, and then over the years, we've just always been close. Um, they've been family and that's just how it is. I mean, like I have like so many cousins, but like, you know, I call them my cousins, but like most of them are not even blood related, but that's just how it is. Like everyone's either your brother, your sister, your dad, your mom, uncle, aunt, or cousin, like that, that's it. And it's all love. It's family of everything. Like we'll die for each other. We'll do anything for each other. And I just find that to be like so pure and like so beautiful. I mean, we don't really see that um, all the time in today's society. So like, that's probably like the one thing I value the most. And it's hopefully something that um, I'll live through in my life and, and through my family too, so. All right, so if there aren't any more questions, um, I'm gonna let you all go. Um, but you know, I, I must say thank you to all of y'all for being so open and, and honest. And that was the true that was the true purpose of the, the series is that I wanted to give minorities the opportunity to be to purposefully, creatively, and, and passionately speak about the things. Raw, you know, just anything that they that they wanted to get off their chest. And I just thank you for trusting in yourself to, to give a piece of yourself because it's not easy um, talking about, you know, a lot of the things that we, that we spoke on tonight. Um, so I just want to thank you so much for sharing your soul um, with each other and just with everyone who will view uh, the YouTube series. So it should come out soon. Um, we'll, we'll keep everyone up to date. Um, Elijah, um, I can give you AJ. Well, well, AJ can give you his 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 email, um, so he can, so you can uh, send him the the information. Hey, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to Khalil because I thought this whole thing was really dope. Um, I mean, you're always doing a lot, and like I always respect that, Khalil. I mean, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I feel like being as vulnerable with people who kind of like can relate on a lot of things is like really powerful. So thank you for like setting this up because I think it was really dope and beneficial. So thanks, Khalil. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, I mean, I, I, I just enjoy uh, the stories. And so I'm, I'm honored to be in this situation, just, just to be in this space, you know? So I just flip it right back to you. You know, thank you uh, for everything.